Hey everybody, I hope you're staying safe and healthy. Um, the next part of your paper that you're going to be writing is the big chunk, which is the results, the discussion, and the conclusion. And so I wanted to talk just a few minutes to you about what those entail. And what I'll say is the best way to see what this looks like and to get a feel for it is to read through some articles that have been published. Yours doesn't have to be quite exactly the way any single one of those are. In fact, I would simplify yours down to having very clear headings and, and so on and so forth, which I'll talk about. But, um, you know, keeping that in mind, just go through and see what's included in each section. You can get some ideas um, looking at those as a model. In fact, what I've done here, I went and pulled three um, articles. I just put in some search terms for things that I know you all are working on and came to whatever was in here first. So this one's dealing with technology and family communication. You've already done all this other stuff. There's your material and methods, surveys, and here's the results. Now notice, I mean, they're, they're fairly brief. Some are longer than others, but this is talking about, okay, the response rate from the surveys, um, the results from this survey validated the findings, it doesn't say, notice it doesn't say anything about like what it means yet. It's just saying uh, several families commented about this thing. Uh, for nurses, the survey response was this. 96 believed that. Um, so you can see how they've really just, it's, it's sort of just the facts is what you're looking at there. Let's look at another one since we're just in results. There's a nice literature review heading. This one's on media bias. Um, so they've got some theory information there and just like we did re research questions or, um, hypotheses right before the method. Uh, there's that one. And then findings is what they're calling this. They're calling it findings instead of results, which that's just what well, I guess this journal uses. Now what they've done here, they've got research question one listed again, and I bet research question two listed here. And so they're just giving very specific information about those particular um, findings for those research questions. They've got it grouped just to keep things clear. Now, as we go down, you'll see the discussion section starts here. This is very long for a results section, but the reason it is, look, there's a big block quote here, big block quote there, another one, another one, another one. I mean, so with this one, they're looking at passages from... Um, TV airings, right? So the, the broadcast. So if you're doing one of those, and I'm thinking about the um, bias in the, the news speech uh, dealing with Iran, the one dealing with immigration and immigrants, you might want to make this a little longer and give some of those. They're called exemplars, but just I sort of quotations from passages, whether it's from someone that you interview, like the uh, sexual assault topic or things that people say on the air like the other two you can give us some examples of those you don't have to do quite this much if you don't want but you know one or two would be nice to give us an idea of what is actually being said about your topic let's look at one more um, this one is barriers to reporting sexual assault for men and women there's a nice method section and here's the results let's see the way they did this They've got tables in here. We can blow those up. If, again, if you want to include a table, feel free to do that. It's, it would be nice to have at least one table or graph or chart or something in there. Um, but I would, didn't make that a requirement on purpose, so it's, it's not required. But, boy, it would not hurt. Um, this, whoops, sorry, I don't know what just happened there. This one... Okay, so this is the results section here where they've got comment. That's what they're calling in this journal the discussion section. So again, fairly short. It's just giving you here are the ways we labeled this stuff. There's a significance p-value. If you've done stats and sent those to me, you've seen some of these things already. They're explaining what's to come in these tables. And that's it. I mean, there's there's no discussion of what it means yet because that's for the next section. Let's go back to the first one. Here's a, a discussion section that unfortunately doesn't have headings. 
It's always nice when they do. But what you may notice as well is that this paragraph here just starts in conclusion. You know, you don't have to label your conclusion section. It's just the last paragraph. It's not really a, a section. So you can just move from the discussion into that. Now, in the document I'll post, I'll talk a little bit about what you should include here. And I guess we can just flip over and take a quick look at that, maybe. Let's see if I can pull it up. Here we go. So the discussion section, what I'm going to tell you is um, to put the study in context, use headings that are very clear. You can still use the research question headings if you want to talk about um, the discussion. You've done that in the methods. You've got it here, right? So you did your method section and then your research question, how you're going to do it. So we can just go ahead and call this discussion. I guess that would make more sense. But you don't have to quite go that route. In the text, and you can read this for yourself, I have uh, things like the implications or what it means. What do your findings mean? So you say that X, Y, Z are changes that things can make, your recommendations. Uh, again, another one, the limitations of your study and possibilities for future research are important to note. Uh, most all papers will have those. So let's go back over and make sure that's right. So, telling us about, okay, here's limitations of this study. Um, I bet they tell us we could do it in the future. Let's see. Distributed good experiences, blah, 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 blah. Effectiveness, questions about this specifically, different across the country. Okay, so they're just telling you in a, a, a limitation, something that, they would do differently if they were going to do it again or that future research might do. Um, the rest of this is going to talk about what it means to have strong communication. Um, yeah, you can look through these. What about the next one? Here, the discussion talking about cognitive dissonance. They're going back to the theory and applying the theory. Um, let's take the bigger picture here. Did they use any... Headings they did not either. I like subheadings in this. I'm telling you, that's definitely a, a way to do it. That's clear. Your your readers doesn't have don't have to do what we're doing right now. But I imagine that it's all still here. Yeah. So though this study only examined one cable news network, this was by design in order to ascertain. So it's a, again addressing what people might see as um, a limitation. The results of the study should be interpreted in the context of several limitations. You see it right there. So they're going to hit you with the limitations. And notice how they do this. I really like this. Um, just put this out. You've got, you know, the first right here. Second right there. Third. Fourth. That's the way to do it. It sounds very cut and dry and bland, but it's clear. And remember, that's the most important thing uh, when you're writing this. Let's see if they get to any future. This is their conclusion paragraph. So, again, the things are always going to be a little different. Let's try this one out. What they call a comment. Now, they use the nice headings. Study limitations. You know, it's a convenient sample, that kind of stuff here. Um, implications and recommendations. Exactly the language I used earlier. So, again... Go through and look and see sort of what these are like and go from there. Um, let's see, sample, qualitative, I don't remember. Okay, let's log back in. I don't remember what this article looked like exactly, so let's take another look. Sorry, the scrolling is a little rough. These are the methods, I think. Let me shrink this, please. Okay, here's their discussion section. They did not use subheadings either. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. 
limitations exist, future research might. So they just kind of ended with that. That That's my guess would be that they hit their page limit or word count limit for this journal. So they thought it was more important to put that in than a solid conclusion. Uh, here is their results section, which again is fairly long, but it looks like they are, again, using these big chunks of quotation mark or quotations. So a little different stroke there. And then let's look at this one. So there's the method section, Confederate selection, consultant training participants. Then there's the instrument check, that analysis. Here's the results. So there's a chunk of information about some general results. Again, explaining what you're going to see. There's the table. Then by research question. How did we, what did we find based on research questions? There's some more tables. Research question one, here's what I found. Research question two, here's what I found. Also, if you had those statistics um, and you sent those into me, I tried to explain what you might want to put down for those. So if you did like a MANOVA, like, whoops, I can't just click on one thing down here. You can see different ways to write those out. Um, this is what your table may look like. Some of those headings will look familiar. Let's see, I think I did a, yeah, I just did the table instead of, in, in place of doing that F score write out. So again, you can see sort of the mean for each group, the overall mean, We've got stuff there. So again, these are all research question results. And let's get to, really don't like the way that, there it is, discussions. So what's up with the discussion? Consultants in the classroom. Here's my recommendation on what you should do with them. Instructor and consultant feedback. Here's what I heard from them and what you should consider, specifically with the embedded group and then with the workshop group over here. Then I get into some additional findings, things that I wasn't testing for, but I, they popped up, thought they would be interesting. There's my future research and limitations and wrap it up with a summary. The study provides communication centers with an increased ability to make decisions. Talk a little bit about it there. So again, they're all going to look a little different, but the idea is that if you go in and you look at some of these, you should get a feel for what yours might look like um, and play around with it. But again, that due date has been pushed back, right? So just so we're all on the same page while we're in here, let's talk about it. Uh, now on Tuesday, uh, April 7th is when that thing is due. So right now, you know, we're way back up here. So next week, you've got some time to really work on this. And that's what you need to do. Um, so I say by uh, Tuesday, I will post a video that discusses just exactly what we're doing now. So here you go. And then by Thursday, I'll post a video that discusses pulling those individual sections of the paper together into one coherent paper. Um, it'll be a little different, but it's fairly cut and dry. It's a matter of just making things flow instead of feel like very separate chunks. So that'll be a brief video. I'll get that up for you at some point soon. And if you have questions, as always, let me know and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I will see you eventually.